Welcome to the Gear Garage, the show that is focused on all gear in the trail scene. I'm Cody Jett, and today I'm with the newest Adida Terex runner, Danny Marino. How are you doing, Danny? I'm doing good. Thanks for inviting me to come on. I appreciate you jumping on. I know you've been pretty busy. You're getting ready for Boston. I know you have the, you know, the sub hub dropping, you know, new episodes coming out there, as well as your regular job. So I know you've been a very busy person. So I appreciate you jumping on and just willing to kind of talk about all gear. So yeah, I know you recently signed with Adidas, uh, Terex line. The ink's pretty much dry now. How, how did that feel signing that contract? Oh, it was so exciting. Uh, it's just a team I've been a really big fan of since pretty much they've come on pretty strong in the last couple of years. But yeah, just all the team members have always been great to me. And it was one of those teams where I didn't hear a single bad thing. Uh, obviously, there's pros and cons to everything, but I really do think uh, they have a great thing going on. And now that I'm part of it and, you know, I've been part of like some team meetings and the team camp at like is as great as it seems like from the outside uh, um just we're super supported by the infrastructure at adidas terex and so it's it's nice to have that that's pretty awesome now i know uh your your announcement was probably one of the best announcements i've ever seen you know whose idea was it to do the dance moves pretty much have like everyone do like a mosh pretty much that's how i took it uh i know you're known for doing your dance moves on ig but whose idea was that yeah it was my idea but um it was kind of one of those things where, you know, it's my first time at team camp. I don't want to, like, come on too strong. <laughs> but at the same time, we were at dinner and everyone was asking me, oh, when are you doing your announcement? And it was supposed to be uh, timed with, like, the official Adidas Terex IG as well. Um, and so once I got word of that, I was like, oh, it was while I was at camp. I was like, would you guys be open to doing the Harlem Shake? And Tom Evans kind of messed with me. He was like, I don't even know what that is. Can you like explain or like show me an example? And I was like, sure. Like it's this and this. And, this. and I was like, wait a second. You're totally pulling my leg. Um, but yeah, everyone was on board and it was just a good time. And I was, it almost like reinforced that I was on the right, that I felt like I was in the right place. That's awesome. I feel like that's always that you, you're like a sigh of relief. You're like, okay, these are my people. You guys <laughs> are, are, you know, we match our, you know what I mean? Like what I think is cool. You guys think is cool. And I could be weird around you guys and you guys aren't like, Ooh, who brought this? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's always the best icebreaker. I don't care what sport you're playing in or even in the business. Once you have that sigh of relief, you're like, Ooh, all right. I signed the right contract. No, but it was really cool. Um, now one question for you, how large is the Terex team? I don't think I have, I see a lot of people with the Terex, but how large is the team? Yeah, so uh, I would say, so we have a global team and then we have regional teams. Um, and so on the global team, I want to say there's almost 30 of us. It's a pretty small team still. Um, and that's from all over the world. Like we have people in Europe, Africa, uh, South America, it, it, everywhere. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we have the different regional teams and I'm not sure like how many people are on those ones, but it's really cool because I know that there's some teams that like keep those, if that's how they are also organized, like they keep that separate, like the global team interacts with the global team, the regional teams kind of stay regionally, but at our team camp, it was like a mix of global and regional team, uh, for North America. And so that was really cool. And we have another team camp that's occurring, you know, for the European folks. And it's the same thing where it's like kind of everyone. Uh, so I really do appreciate that they include that. That's cool. Now, I know this one was in Arizona. I think Arizona. Okay. Where's the one in Europe going to be? Do you know? Um, it's somewhere in the Canary Islands, I believe, because it's it's warm there this time of year, which is That's nice. A bad spot to have a camp at. That's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know you were with Hoke before. Now, I don't, at least I don't know this. Did, was this like one of your first camps with a, a team or does Hoke also do? Yeah, this was my first camp ever. Um, and it was just such a cool experience to have basically a whole week where we're supported to uh, some people were racing black canyon so it was kind of built around that as well uh which was really awesome because then we got to crew our team members who were trying to chase down golden tickets and stuff like that um and then the rest of us who weren't doing the race were you know full-on training mode for whatever it was and so yeah each day we kind of like mixed it up and we played games and like yeah just did like a fun kickoff to the year which was awesome 
That's really cool. I feel like, um, you know, from an outsider looking in, you know, you're like, okay, that's really cool. That's like something you kind of get a little FOMO with. And then I even think like watching the Golden Trail series, you know, seeing those types of groups, you're like, well, that's really cool. So no, I was really, like I said, your announcement was fantastic. And then just seeing how everybody joined in with you was really cool to see. Now, I can't imagine joining the Terex team was that hard to make, but you do have to go through a process. You know, we all personally, you're like, oh, I love this brand. I love this brand. But if the shoe doesn't work, obviously, there's no point joining it. So you knew your contract was coming up at the end of the year. Like, what does that process look like? I know you used an agent. Does your agent get on the phone and be like, hey, Danny, what are the three or four brands you want to work with? I'll get on the phone. And like, what does that process look like for you? Yeah, in this instance the agent actually came like much later than maybe for some other athletes i love having personal connections with the brands that i potentially will be uh engaging with and so like i reached out to you know what brands i was interested at the time um and wanted to make those connections and just saying like hey this is coming from me like the words are coming from the horse's mouth this is why i'm interested in your team etc and Like something that not all people know is like there's not always room for new athletes depending on like what that brand's budget looks for that year, et cetera. Or, you know, maybe they someone wasn't on a contract and already got signed and that took up the budget or, you know, their athletes on the team right now, like their contracts are changing. Anyways, like they're always working with the budget and like it depends on what what they're looking for, too, because sometimes teams are very ultra heavy and like they want old like I've ran one or two ultras but like they want the hundred and hundred milers and then uh some brands you know have a mix and they only want a couple sub ultra and then you know like 20 percent 30 percent you know kind of mixing it around I have I think Solomon might be the only brand that's like a little bit sub ultra heavy in in some space if you include the regional teams um but anyway so yeah I reached out Um, But Adidas was kind of my personal number one the whole time. I was definitely like going in with an open mind because there were other brands that I did want to talk to and and learn more and like just see what they were doing like in the upcoming years. Like maybe they're not doing it now, but maybe they are planning on having team camps or like these other types of engagements for athletes or they do plan on supporting in a different way going forward. Um, And so, yeah, then I narrowed it down. And, you know, tried the different shoes. Um, and Adidas line just was really impressive to me. Like, I just I knew in my gut I was going to be able to transition to them pretty safely and quickly. Which, like, there's other shoes where I was like, I really like these, but it might take me longer based on, like, my foot strike and just how the, the shoe is structured, etc. Um, and also just, like, what's in the pipeline was really important to me as well. Uh, with these brands, which they don't always share because um, maybe it's like three years in advance and they're not going to tell me. Um, But sometimes they'll be a little generous and say like, well, we have this coming out before UTMB next week or next year. Um, And so that kind of like helped me form my mind. I was was like, okay, cool. Um, And yeah, Adidas just also had like a very well-rounded because there's they put so much R and D into their road shoes as well, which is important for me personally because like I run on the roads a lot too. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And you know, um, so like when you, you said, all right, Terex is my the group I want to go to, did you tell them, hey, I want to try these five shoes, or did they just literally say, Hey, we're sending you a box, let us know what you think? Like, what does that process look like? I mean, uh, me personally, I'm a I'm a data nerd. I work in that industry, so I'm very logical. Like, okay, I'm going to test these shoes for one week, then I'll do this other brand. Like, how did that look like? Did you just open up your door and just a huge box right there? What's that look like? Yeah. So, um, again, it like varies brand to brand. Yeah. Um, but usually they'll like send you based on what races you participate in, okay. like what shoes you might use so it's not like they're gonna send me this is a very extreme example but it's not like they're gonna send me track spikes you know and so like generally speaking yes so they sent me like more of their low profile trail shoes because that's what i I like and i kind of told them that um with other brands they might 
like send two pairs and then if I'm really liking them maybe I'll ask for you know an another style that's s close to the one that I like out of the two um so yeah it looks a little bit different but essentially yeah like you get sent shoes Okay. Yeah. So like, that's what was the curious thing. You know, I was wondering, like, do you just open up your door? You have that box. And then do they give you a time frame like with Terex where they like, hey, Danny, clock starts now with the shoes. Like we need an answer by now. Or is it like, hey, just let us know when you're ready. Yeah, so um, I can speak to it generally, um, but usually you have like an allotted amount of time and it's, you know, anywhere from three weeks to 12 weeks. It depends on like the athlete and like the type of situation and like their contractual language in their contract that they're currently in. Um, and so that's what I had to work off of. I can't like share what that amount was, but it's like, it's. I mean, you ask anybody and um, like if I if I was like, Cody, make a choice for the next three years off of like, you know, six weeks of trying shoes. It's it's like enough, but not at the same time, because it's like how much wear and tear are you going to be able to put on six to eight pairs of shoes in six weeks to where you can get like a full understanding of how it's going to break down and stuff like that and so that's where like I really leaned on people that were already using the shoes to like ask them about that and like the types of races they use it in and like um I like went online and read reviews because I've been in the same shoes for five years and I know though I know Hoka like the back of my hand but you know this was my first time trying Adidas shoes so um Yeah, it's just like a very interesting process where you really have to lean into like almost your professionalism, like as as an athlete and your ability to read shoe design and stuff like that. Uh, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And uh, that like personally, like would give me angst. So I was like, I'm signing a three-year contract and I only have, you know, a couple of weeks to try the shoes. And I'm a person that does shoe reviews and I love rocking shoes. And uh, if you said, Cody, you have a couple of weeks, pick a brand that will be able to build a shoe rotation. That's where my head would go. I'd be like, uh, I'd be a deer in headlights. So, but you know, for you, you had that, the shoes, I know, People love Terex. Uh, I know personally, I've run in a couple of their shoes and they just build really quality shoes. Uh, you know, the rubber they're using is great for a lot of different terrains. So I know you're uh, the types of racing you're doing, the sub ultra rain, you know, you're going to have a little bit of a mixture of everything. So I imagine the materials they're using are going to they're stripped down, they're grippy, they have, you know, the bite them out. And if you need that, or if you need a little bit more minimalist shoe, you don't need so much grip, you know, they're good for that. So Uh, so that's awesome. Like I said, I'm definitely glad to see this come through. The one thing for me with signing with Terex, I think their gear is just beautiful. Like, is that just me? Like, did that play a role in you? Like, your the shoes Adidas is dropping, just roads or trails, are just nice looking. Like, does that play a role in you? You're like, I like that shoe. Um, I wouldn't say like maybe subconsciously, I don't know. Uh, I do uh, totally agree with you. Like the Adidas Tarek stuff is, I think it's like sexy. It's really cool. It's like very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say so. Cause there were some other shoes that I tried that aren't as aesthetically pleasing that I really enjoyed. I mean, I feel like the race kits, I remember looking at UTMB and just seeing their race kits, you're like head to toe. That's like, it just looks appealing. I don't, that's the best way I can put it. Like I'm a sucker. If I watch a commercial, I'm like, I'm the marketing, like they love me. I see it. I'm like, that's beautiful. I want that on, you know, I'm a sucker for that. So like I said, when I saw Ruth Croft at UTMB, A, I want to know what shoe she's rocking. And that whole uniform was just like, you're like, That's really cool looking. That's just, again, as a person that is a fan of the sports, I remember looking at the live stream, people being like, look at those kits, look at those kits, look at those kits. And I think that's important. I like it. So, Yeah, it definitely is part of that, like, look good, feel good mentality, right? Like, when it looks sharp and it has, like, a certain level of professionalism. I don't know, you just, in your mind, subconsciously equate, like, looking sharp to being a professional. Like, I totally agree. And it, what I really liked about them is, like, they were so um, cohesive, like, across all the different athletes and stuff that, again, going back to that, like, team, like, hashtag one team, it's like, that is the Adidas team and they're showing up as this unit that all look the same and super sharp.
Well, now what are the couple of shoes that you've been wearing a lot? Not on the roads. I know you're getting ready for Boston, but on the trails, what are a couple of the shoes that you've been wearing? Yeah, so my favorite shoe right now is the Speed Ultra. I don't know if you've tried that one. Um, it's a, uh, it's like one of their lower. It's like their second or third most low profile trail shoe. Uh, and I've been geeking out on this one because even before like I'd fully signed with the team, I was reaching out to some of the athletes. I was like, "What would you use like in the races that I'm doing and stuff like that?" And a few of them had shot this one over, and I was like trying to find. It. I was like, oh, "Okay, so this one." Um, and immediately from the first time I tried it. There was just like stuff that really stuck out to me. Like I just like had such good grip on rocks in a way that I hadn't experienced in recent years, um, especially like on wet rock and stuff like that. And the granite in the Eastern Sierra is notoriously slippery. Um, and so this just like made me feel so confident just like from the first run that I really enjoyed. And they're really quite light. Like they do take, at least in my again, going back to that very short um, kind of like trying out window. At first I was like, oh, these are, they're different like from what I used to wear. Um, but they kind of just like mold around your feet. And once they are broken in, they just like fit like a glove, which I really liked. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the main one that I've been wearing so far. Okay. Now, do you find yourself to like a uh, more minimalist, nimble, lower to the ground kind of shoe? Or do you, I mean, you came from Hoka, which is notoriously known for max stack, it feels like. So definitely feels like uh, a big 180 right there. Yeah. So uh, even with Hoka, I don't know. I'm guessing you're familiar with Hoka, but I would wear the Zanal and then, uh, which is like their most low profile shoe from their trail shoe. So I've always loved a lower profile shoe. And before that, it was like the Speed Instinct, which is like years and years ago. Um, they retired that one probably for good reason. <laughs> if anyone knows from who tried it, uh, the tread just wasn't that great. And then um, I would rock, I would rock. <sighs> I would rock like the ATRs too. So I was always trying to find like lower drop and like uh smaller, yeah, smaller. Wow, my brain is, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Lower, yeah. And <laughs> uh the this last year I actually got to try the second iteration of the Zanal, like as a prototype, which that's just like everywhere on the internet now because a few of us started wearing them. So I feel like that's okay to say. Um like you could look at any pictures and so that one was also low profile so that's something that i just yeah i personally have always enjoyed nice yeah and i, I think uh you know with a, a terex brand you know they have a lot of shoes so if you're looking for max stack whatever rate you know maybe for recovery they got that shoe for you but for your you know if you're looking for a low low to the ground nimble uh you know they definitely have that for you and the cool thing about terex is at least from the eyes, from me, it looks like they get to steal a lot of technology from the other Adidas line. You know what I mean? So you see a lot of boost. Now you're seeing the boost light or the light or what is that? Uh, light strike pro and things like that. So seeing that make it over to the trail side is kind of cool to see them mixing it up like that. Oh, a hundred percent. And like, I, I guess I should preface to like, I wear the a graphic flow as well. Uh, the graphic flow too, which like has a little bit more stack height for like easier days and stuff like that. If I want a little bit more cushion. And again, it like takes a couple runs coming from Hoka. Like when you put on Hoka's, like they immediately are super soft and like really spongy um, for like, for better, for worse, when you're looking at trails and like really aggressive stuff. And so with Adidas, like it took a couple of times and I was like, oh, once this, once it fits your foot, like I, yeah, I just have been loving the ride with that one as well. And yeah, going back to the technology, like Adidas has those light pro poles too. Like they don't have the full on carbon plates with everything. That's like a version of their kind of like propulsion i guess from the ground and like giving you back energy uh it is cool to like see them take some of those different aspects with the foams and stuff like that as well into their trail shoes yeah now i know you've only been with terex for a little while now do they have any carbon rottage trail shoes in the works or out already uh no not yet not yet okay um, now I know you went to camp with uh, right around uh, black canyons and tom evans was running in a prototype 
shoe. That pink shoe, Abby Hall was rocking it. Did you get to run in that shoe by any chance? Do you get your hand on that during the camp? Uh, no, but hopefully very soon. <laughs> okay. okay. So do you know any, because inf- that was one of the questions. I, I reached out to the free trail people and that everyone's like, can we get information about that pink shoe that Tom Evans was rocking? Any information on that one you can share? Um, no, just like, <laughs> just, <laughs> just if you could be patient just a little bit longer. Um, usually I'll say generally, if you see an athlete trying a prototype, at least in the trail space, I could speak to the road space is a little bit more foreign to me, but like, it's usually within like 12 to 18 months, I would say that you'll see that shoe. Yeah, because one of the rumors I heard, you know, I, I won't rat out who told me, it's potentially a UTM boot, uh, or no, a Western States focus shoe. And then I was like, well, that's really intriguing now because um, you know, if we're making shoes very specific for races. I know other brands have tried that um, and it didn't turn out really, you know, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not, you know, with the track record of Terex, when you're saying, hey, we're going to make a Western States focus shoe then all of a sudden the ears start raising you go well now i need to know a little bit more about that so i am curious if we're going to see more carriage runners out at least on western states rocking that pink shoe maybe is <laughs> all i could say you can, you can you can i don't want to get you just on the contract i do not want to get you in trouble so uh, you know so one of the things i did want to touch base with so before you came over to Terex, i know you ran with rabbit um and i actually before I started this adventure, I was on the Rad Rabbit team, so I'm very familiar with it. And one of the coolest things that Rabbit does is after, you know, they'll have a line for their pros. And you were one of those pros that had your own line. How did that feel? I mean, that is just freaking awesome. One, the style you had and the the gear you picked, my wife loved, and I know huh. it was just really cool looking. But how does that feel? Um, Yeah, I don't take it for granted. It's very surreal. Um. For me, the biggest thing with that line was kind of just where, you know, one can assume if your name is on something that you'll get some sort of kickback, right? I feel like that's pretty safe to say. And so to me, it was more about like the intention of crafting the gear and like where that potential kickback would go. And that went to uh, the community that I grew up in. There's, it's like an an underserved Hispanic community, especially when it comes to athletics. And so it just made that whole experience like times a million for me to be able to, you know, come from that city and to be where I am today, you know, and then to be able to, give it back um to people that you know were by my side from day one that was really cool um and then the actual like testing of the gear and picking the colors was actually really hard uh (laughs) you know imagine being a little kid and having a blank piece of paper and someone saying like all right you only get to choose one thing to draw on here and like here but you have every color and every pattern and you know t- at your disposal you can imagine there's so many things you want to create <laughs> and so i was like dang it's really cool to be the rabbit co-founders you could just constantly be coming <laughs> up with these patterns and colors but i only get one <laughs> um but yeah that was it was really fun to like mess with that and like you know try and pick what i thought best represented me and my personality and hopefully what people would like and enjoy and you know some aspects that hopefully people um could use like as an apparel piece but yeah i loved that entire experience if i ever get to do that again that would just be so cool i don't know if i will um but yeah, it was it was pretty surreal. And like <laughs> when I, I'll see people like wear it here and there, like, you know, with my name and it's like, oh, that's my name. That's really cool. And my friend did like the little um, or the initial idea for the logo design, which you'll see like my name with like mountains and the palm tree and stuff. So it's just like it just meant a lot. Yeah. That, I mean, first off, knowing now, you know, the side story of where the money is going to the community makes me love the line even more. Uh, let me just put it that way. I think that is just super rad. And it might have been on their site, but I personally didn't know that. So knowing that, like, I love it even better now. Um, and growing up, you know, I we had the Air Jordan and then all these lines. To have your name 
on like a piece of apparel or shoe, whatever it is, like that means something. That doesn't just happen to just like Joe Schmo off the street, you know? So that, that's gotta be cool. Like, I mean, did you frame it? Do we have like your singlet in a, a frame yet? Uh, no, that's a really good idea though. That's, I should do that. I was trying to think of how I could save it. Cause obviously I'm not with them. And that was one of the things I was most sad about, you know, um, that that would now become a memory sort of thing. Uh, well, obviously it, it still is alive and well, but yeah, it's, I will say it like, it's never gone over me, like how cool that was. Um, and yeah, it even, it, yeah, I just like had people reach out and stuff and saying they liked the top and I think they still use that style, but now they're starting to do like different patterns and colors. So it's, it's cool to see that all the testing I did was tried and true and that <laughs> I wasn't the only person that found those different features of the, the crop hop important yeah. for the type of racing that I like to do. Uh, so that's also just like validation um, that I have some idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good feeling. You know what I mean? It is that like yeah. sigh of relief when you're like, okay, people are buying this, you know, uh, yeah. buy pretty awesome. but again, I think your designs were awesome. I do. Um, and not only that, but you're in the, you're in the, the Eric Sensman, Hayden Hawks and Amanda Basham. I mean, those are the four, at least there might be another one. And I apologize if I missed it, but that's a great company to be in. You know, I mean, those four people right there, um, you know, to say, Hey, I was one of the top, the first four people to get a line from Rabbit is pretty cool. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think Anna Frost might have something too, okay. but yeah, I think just going back to kind of representing the sub ultra space, I think also added, you know, a, a gold star to that experience because all those athletes that you listed are ultra athletes. Um, and so just highlighting there's, there's those of us that don't run that far, but like, there's a need for those types of races too, which is awesome. Yeah. No, and honestly, you know, I'm relatively newer into the trail scene, you know, only a couple of years. And I remember watching the golden trail series and that was what brought me to the, the, um, you know, sub ultra scene. And it's awesome. Um, you know, it is one of those things where like, you can't blink because people are running. There's no stopping. And an ultra, you have people at the aid station stop and here it's like NASCAR. That's what I compare the sub ultra chain. It's like NASCAR. Here's your bottle. Go. And you got to keep running. Um, you know, and again, just from a person looking in, did that play a role in having a team signing with Adidas Terex? When you go over there, having a team tr like roommates to be with and a team when like, because I remember that I watched one video and it was like, you went over with your parents to be your, your crew. And now you go over there and I'm assuming, you know, the Terex will be your crew. Was that like a huge role in joining them? Oh, a hundred percent. Like being part of that series the last couple of years, just seeing how, how much of a difference it does. It is to like have a team supporting you. And pro I, I mean, think the first season was the whole like bottle debacle that if you didn't have a team, like no one was handing you bottles and there was like multiple races where that was a huge disadvantage to me yeah. <laughs> that no one was handing me bottles and I had to like unscrew and like fill the bottles yeah. I had which seems like so small, but in these short races, that's a lot of time. Like that can add up really quick. Um, so yeah, that was huge. And also just like the Solomon team took me under their wing uh, and they're all super fun athletes. And like, they would let me eat dinner with them and stuff like that. And it was just so cool. Like seeing that family aspect of, of the power that could bring like to athletes performances. Um, so that was definitely a high priority, a hundred percent. Now, when you were, you know, over there and it, it almost feels like back in college, at least, you know, I played college baseball and it's like, you're with your crew, jump from hotel to hotel. Were you all, like, you knew your contract was coming up. Were you eyeing like, Ooh, look at those shoes or Ooh, let me look at that apparel. Like, were you doing that secretly or not really? Um, I think any athletes, it contract who's that's coming to an end there's like a certain um mortality retrospective okay. uh mortality retrospective that occurs um where you're just kind of like where where am i at in this sport like am i going to keep pursuing it at this level etc and you're like do i want to continue with this brand or not and I will say like with Hoka and Rabbit, there was definitely no 
bad blood at all. Um, because again, I had been with them for almost close to five years at that point. It was just more so I was looking for like a refreshed mindset on the sport. And I felt that for me personally, how that looked was going with a new team uh, that, you know, was more suited to the values that I have now as an athlete versus, you know, three, four years ago, et cetera. And so as I looked for those values and what I thought would propel me in this next phase, but also just continue to satisfy my my love and tenacity for the sport of trail running. Adidas just kept look like see me from the outside, they were checking the boxes. And so that's when, you know, talking with the team and like trying the shoes is like that next set of boxes that, okay, are we changing this to like an actual check and and you know, we'll pursue with conversations and stuff. Yeah. And from the little I know, Jill and Monica, I can imagine they're probably celebrating more than maybe you were, you know, about this uh, exciting adventure. You know, they're just those types of people. Um, now, you know, with the season, I know you have Boston coming up, so we won't touch on that one. What trail races do you have coming up or the, for the 2023 20, season? Yeah, this is hot off the press because I just talked with my coach yesterday about this. Um, so we are going to go with the Mont Blanc Marathon which is really exciting. I was trying to decide between that one and Broken Arrow 23K, I think it is now. Um, and so, yeah, that was actually a really hard decision because I've been wanting to go to Broken, back to Broken Arrow for years. Um, but I just think that one extra week will be nice. And I am planning on going back to OCC this year. And I found that Mont Blanc Marathon just really prepared me well to like see those trails and then come back home and like adjust my training based on that. Um, and like truly I've only been in Chamonix twice. Um, and so going back and being able to see it again, I think will be really helpful going again back into OCC. Cool. So we got Mont Blanc, we got OCC. Any others on the the, the books right now? Um, Probably Speed Goat is the other one um just because i actually need a stone uh to get back into occ okay yeah. all right so that's so. cool because i'll be able to race back in the u.s which i actually haven't done i feel like well i guess i did flagstaff last year but yeah there you go so that should be exciting for you now i know you have boston coming up like, how is that training going i mean i know you're now in santa barbara you're no longer in the the snow of uh mammoth but i you know, I know you run out on the snow, which is probably great for your joints. How's that training going for you? Um, it's it's a mix of things because it's just so different. Um, especially this winter where it's just been extremely challenging to say the least. Um, just because we're on record snow and it's I do love running on the snow, but even then I can yeah, so the training has been challenging, like, with the snow and stuff. And it's just different from trails, um, at least, like, with how intentive I'm being about this training. It just requires a different type of um, – I keep saying attentive, but that's really what it is, just, like, with pacing and, like, learning yeah. marathon pacing because it's also my marathon debut, so it's just very uncharted territory for me. Um, that's all to say. So it's been really hard but also extremely rewarding. Like I'm seeing gains in myself from like a road and speed aspect that I haven't seen in like the last few years. And I'm excited to race there and just be there in the atmosphere and like go for that OTQ. Cause I really do believe I can get it and then uh, take that momentum into trail season and hopefully, you know, better upon what I did last year, which, you know, I'm just frothing at the mouth for. <laughs> I mean, you, you just did a half marathon and it sounds like that was your first half marathon and at least on the roads for quite some time. And that was a heck of a time. Um, so definitely congratulations on that. So your, your plan is definitely working. And I know this is the two, but I know you've been running in the pro three, like, yeah. how are you liking this shoe? Like, what are your, I mean, you're relatively new to the Adidas in line in general. Like, have you enjoyed running in this shoe for half marathon and now marathon? Yeah. Um, thank you, by the way. Yeah, it was my first half in like five years, six years. I'm not sure. Um, Heck of a time. I mean, yeah, I mean, especially coming out of winter, you know, that's when people are recovering their bodies to come out of the gates like that. I mean, it's not too shabby. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. It was one of those things where I was like, this is a new feeling again. Uh, I forgot how it feels to run a half. And then immediately afterwards, I was like, oh, can we get one more in before Boston? Because I think I like I know I can go faster. Um, I I sometimes get a, a not I get hesitant to use the word rust buster all the time. But this was the first time in a while where I was like, that was rust buster. Like, let's give this another go. Um But yeah, for the shoes, I did run in those, um, the Audios Pro 3, and I had done like a couple of strides and like a couple of miles in them. And the half was like one of, the, it was the longest run I had done in them. And yeah, it was just so crazy. Um, <laughs> I never, <laughs> it just was, it took a little Uh, it took a couple minutes to like get used to the flow of it, especially, you know, through hills and stuff like that. Um, but it was just so bouncy. I was just like, is this what everyone else has been feeling? Because uh, I have never had this feeling before. Uh, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed them. It's a crazy fast shoe too. So I'm, you know, a fast person, but I remember I threw this on and I did a tempo run and I did, I started off slow and then I jumped into the tempo and I remember looking at my watch and being like, my watch is wrong. Like I just felt effortless. The, the rods they were using are, you know, at first I was like, oh, rods not using the plate. Like, well, that's kind of weird. You know, don't overthink it, Adidas. And then I started cruising in the shoe and I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Like, this is a really nice shoe. No, a hundred percent. I was like, that's where the R and D got you was rods. And I was like, <laughs> um, but yeah, the same thing. Like once I put them on, I was like, all right, like you guys are on to something definitely. And yeah, the energy return on that is kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'll be, we had to do like, we had to submit what shoes we're wearing for Boston cause I'm in the pro field. And so that's what I'll be racing in there. Um, and I have like a really big, like my last big, big effort on this Sunday. Um, and I'll, I'll be wearing those. So, yeah. Now, um, I think in the other ones, you were in the black and green ones. Are you going with the, the black and greens one? I know they have a Boston shoe that dropped, you know, just Boston theme. Will you be going with that one or which one are you going with? Yes, I think I'll go with black and green. Um, I do. So have you tried the Boston, like the Adidas Boston? Yeah. That's another good one that I just have really enjoyed for like tempos and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll throw this on for bigger efforts. Okay. Now, is there any other road shoes besides the Boston 11 and the Adios 3 that you're rocking on the roads? Um, it's the Audios. No, sorry. The Adidas Pro, just like the pink flat. I don't Okay. know if you know what I'm talking Yeah, about. I know what you're talking about. Um, it doesn't have any rods or plates in it. Um, I've been telling my coach, I just like, this is my first time wearing like a carbon super shoe, I would say, uh, you know, interpret that as you will. Um, and so I find myself just like a little, I'm not nervous, but I just have never had this much power, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. And so I still find myself uh I'll wear like their, the neutral road shoes for, you know, 70% of my stuff. And then I'll wear the flat with nothing carbon for like a lot, a, probably more of my efforts in the carbon stuff. And I'll just like use that for like really special occasions. Um, it's like my special dress or whatever. And so I'm still getting used to like, yeah, having that much power. Um, but everyone says, no, you need to use it so you can get <laughs> used to it. Uh, but it's just, a, it's been a new experience for me. Uh, it's definitely a good show. And it's really funny because uh, the pink one, the flat one you're talking about, I remember when that dropped, everybody thought that was their super shoe. And everybody got it. And everybody's like, there's no way this is a super shoe. And then all of a sudden this comes out and you're like, oh, okay. I love Adidas shoes, but their naming convention is probably the most confusing ever. They added an Adi Zero Adios and I'm just like, I'm cooked. As a person that like works in data with naming conventions, I'm just like, Hire a data person. Let's fix these naming. Like, come on now, because I'm so confused sometimes. But I think the weirdest part for me was when I laced this shoe up is this gap right here. I was like, there's holes in the foam. Like, why? I know they did it for speed, for uh, the, the shed some weight and everything, but it's a weird sensation. Walking in the shoe is weird. Running in it, not bad. Walking in it, you're like, this is weird. I can't, I can't be running in this shoe. Like, at least that was my personal experience.
Yeah, I was a little confused by it at first, too. And I was like, why is it kind of like chunky in the front and chunky in the back? Um, especially because, yeah, I, I've never worn anything like that where there's like chunks missing. But then once you get going and you're like, oh, OK, like it, you don't feel it once you start running, like you said. Yeah, I mean, imagine you're a forefront. You're striking right here. So this shoe is made for that. I mean, if you're a heel striker, maybe you might run into some issues. But if you're in that forefront, I mean, this shoe is made for that energy. And it actually forced for me, it forced me to be on that. And that's when I was like, oh, crap, this is how I'm supposed to be running. That's cool. Um, Because I do not come from a running background. I was baseball and I hated running. So now being in this world and trying these different shoes, it's like, oh, OK, this is pretty cool. Uh, now, with being on Tarek's side, when you are running on the roads, like how does that work? Do you just call up the brand manager, be like, "Hey, I'm going to be on the roads in a while. Can I get some road shoes?" Or like, what's that typically look like? Yeah, I would say that, you know, uh, many trail runners also train on the roads as well. So it's not uncommon to like ask for road shoes. Um, and in this case, like, you know, it's like not clean the fifth, but it's like, hey, I'm going to run a road marathon. It's Boston. I'm debuting. I'm going to go for the OTQ. Like, hope that's OK. It's like, yep, as long as there's trail running on your schedule as well, like you could go and do that. Um, so, yeah, they were really supportive from like day one, which was awesome. I mean, I imagine, you know, you knew you wanted to go for that Olympic qualifying time and, you know, trails are important to you. Was that something like when you were looking at brands too? do they have a super shoe? Like, do they have a, a super shoe that when I want to go for that, did that play a role at all or pretty much just trail kind of shoes worried about? A hundred percent. And, you know, I don't feel the best saying that, but I just feel like in today's landscape, uh, like I'm going to do this marathon and odds are I will probably run some other road races, you know, within the contractual agreement with Adidas at this time. Right. And so for me, um, yeah, it, it was just really important that I felt like I could be competitive and like I wasn't at a disadvantage first and foremost on the trails, um, but then also on the roads, um, you know, not just from like, because there's a certain there's a certain level of confidence that comes when you can say like now for me, it's like I broke 73 like that's pretty cool. And that instills like a new and confidence in me when I like come now to the trails, like, okay, I can do that on the roads. Like now what more can I do on the trails? And so having the right equipment that can enable you to be there potentially today instead of tomorrow, uh, I think makes a big difference, especially um, in where the professional, the professional landscape is with trail running right now. Now, you know, one last thing with, uh, I know when you did your half marathon, you wore the Terex uh, singlet and everything. Will you still wear the Terex uh, gear when running Boston or are we going with the more conventional Adidas uh, gear? I actually don't know yet. I'm supposed to learn in like the next couple of weeks what they're going to outfit me in. Um, I think it might be like the traditional Adidas kit, but I heard rumblings that there might be something special for Boston too, just like for all the Adidas athletes. So we'll see um, what I end up doing. I'm yeah, I'll learn in the next couple of weeks and hopefully get sent that <laughs> pretty soon. I guess, I guess it's going to have green in it because their new Adidas Adios 3 is all green for Boston. So my guess is yeah. something green will be in there, which will match your black and green shoes. So you yeah, know, as a person that likes matching, you know, works out nice. But, um, you know, you're probably going to be the only person at Boston when they get the heartbreak hill. It's going to be like, oh, that was a hill. I mean, that has nothing on the training I've been doing. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, definitely. Well, we do. You'll probably love this, but there is new. Uh, we'll have new kits for Terex this year, too, that will be debuted, which is exciting. Okay. And can you give us a hint on color wise or anything like that? Or are we all look nope, just different. <laughs> and you're not giving me any of the top secrets. Don't tell me Tom I know. I like just learned about this the other oh. day too, and they're like, don't share anything. What if like, we're sharing with friends? You know, we, we, yeah. won't, we won't break the news. So uh, you know, we've been running for a little while now. Um, you know, I don't want to keep you too long. Is there anything you brand wise or anything you want to plug right now and talk about? Um, I think 
No, just, oh, I started a podcast as well. It's called The Sub Hub. Um, and that's with the Free Trail family. And that my co-host is MK. And so that's where we focus on all things Sub Ultra. And so we have some fun episodes coming out where we interviewed different members of the trail team. Um, and then we have some other fun series that are going to come out in the coming months as well. And then we'll start diving into the main part of the Sub ultra racing season which starts pretty much in may uh so i'm really excited about that for people to listen yeah and if you haven't checked it out i highly recommend it it's freaking awesome um i know all the free trial people are loving it and i'm personally loving it so um you know it's one of those if you're going for a long run if you're looking for a podcast highly recommend it. and i am excited because i know the ultra or sub ultra scene starting soon and i'm curious what types of uh pods you guys are dropping because i can imagine the deeper you're into the Golden Trail series, deeper into the season, what these episodes are going to look like. So. Yeah, it'll definitely include a variety of people in this space, which we're really excited about. And honestly, after the first episode, we got so many requests <laughs> of what we should talk about. So we have more than enough to talk about for at least this year <laughs> going I, forward. I would because I don't at least off the top of my head, I don't know any sub ultra podcasts that are out there. And I know, like I said, you know, from people that talk about the golden trail series, I know I keep at echoing that one because it's so exciting to watch, but like, no, I mean, you are the only podcast that I know that's sub ultra. So that's really cool. Yeah. From what I know as well, <laughs> that's why we started it. Um, there might be more, but yeah, pretty much everything is about ultra running right now. That's awesome. You know, so I know you have Boston coming up. So definitely good luck with that. When we when you get that OTQ, I cannot wait to celebrate with you and hear all about the stories. And then obviously, once we'll, you get ready for that, the Olympic trials, I'm going to have to have you back on the show because I know you're probably going to have the new Audi 04 <laughs> and all the kits. So, you know, I definitely appreciate you taking this time out of your day to join with me. Uh, and I look forward to the 2023 season. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Cody. It was fun to chat. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, remember, guys, check out the sub hub if you haven't. And thanks for checking out the show.